the joke of nonlinear supply and demand. So what joke am I referring to? Uh, is it this one? A customer has been wandering around a store for 20 minutes without buying anything. Uh, now, slightly irritated, the storekeeper says to him, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Uh, to which the customer replied, the trick is not making the horse drink, but making it thirsty. No, not that one. What about the second joke? Uh, an entrepreneur replies to being asked about the secret of his success. Uh, he says, my business isn't selling something I have to someone who needs it, but selling something I don't have. To someone who doesn't need it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Although the old jokes are still the best. Uh, I'm referring to the joke that is on anyone who enters a commodity market wanting to actually buy something rather than just using the market as a place to gamble on futures options. And who are these suckers who actually want to buy commodities? Well, Everyone who supplies food to eat, fuel for energy, raw materials for production, etc. So, whoever said there's a sucker born every minute, uh, I know it wasn't Phineas T. Barnum, uh, but whoever it was, he was spot on. So, where do the scheming jokers place their money as bets to take advantage of these suckers. Why? In commodity markets, which have become a Barnum and Bailey circus. However, these jokers mistakenly believe that they can use the supply and demand curves, so beloved of economists, uh, take it to advantage and gain sure fire profits. Uh, these jokers either make demands but don't really want the commodities, or they say they can supply but they don't have the goods. They're just gambling on futures. Either way, these jokers are missing the point, and their jokes often rebound on them. What they don't realize is that their very preconceptions of these supply-demand curves actually feeds back to affect the underlying data and consequently negates the curves themselves by, by triggering an uncertainty principle. In their nice, tidy, linear world of theory, the consequences of an action stop with a reaction. In the non-linear world of practice, who knows what havoc feedback will cause? Now, pointing mathematical instruments at a complex market in what is a, a practical world of nonlinear supply and demand. This can only create instability because the only certainty is uncertainty. There's no point in measuring something that will change the moment it's measured. And because it's being measured, like the nonsense of British healthcare targets, surgeons push dying patients out of the operating theatre, into the corridor, so that death in surgery figures are kept low. Uh, in conditions like today's commodity markets, the jokers are setting off a non-linear positive feedback sequence, triggering a chain of events within a system that affects their analysis, something the jokers themselves don't actually appreciate. The meaning created when they interpret the supply and demand curves uh, through their own personal intellectual filters is invalidated by the very act of interpretation. The systemic nature of this situation is often neglected uh, due to the fact that the smug jokers are using the curves to second-guess meaning in the minds of others. When those others also contain large numbers of jokers, all confident that they can take advantage of their so-called superior economic knowledge, else linear knowledge, then 
the joke is on them. Some of those involved aren't even human, but artificial intelligence programs. Well, human or machine, they're all thinking the same way. And this multiply reinforcing subjective interpretation will always totally distort the apparently objective world of data. Goodhart's law comes into play. Charles Goodhart, a distinguished LSE professor, famously noted, any observed statistical regularity will tend to collapse once pressure is placed on it for control purposes. Thus, <laughs> the jokers too have become suckers. <laughs> Welcome to the cosmic joke that is nonlinear supply and demand. Thank you.